Hey everybody, Haku here with my magical girl raising project on <laughs> Haku to Weeks A.K. Kaku. Uh, read through, continuing. Yeah, uh, chapter 4 for restart, and it's uh, titled Mysterious Candy. Now, uh, this one's 41 pages long, and I, I want to, it's going to maybe be a longer video, but I want to do it in one video, just because I'm super, super behind on recording and posting things, so I want to just... I want to get it done in one video, um, take my time with it of course still, but get it done in one video so I can post it tomorrow because today is Saturday and hopefully I want to have it up by Sunday because uh, this week I'm going to be super busy with catching up to Boku no Hero Academia and a bunch of stuff it, and then after that will be like the first Wednesday of the uh, month week so that's going to be a busy week the week after that as well. So I'm running into two really busy weeks and I'm already behind so um not not in a great way here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and read. What happened? It's been so long since I read chapter 3. It feels like. So at the very end, we kind of got Yemenashima, her body's missing, and they just dropped a building on Akane. And I guess that's where we're at, just in general. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and see what happens here. So we're starting off with Shadow Gale. When a player dies, their items don't disappear, but when a magical phone gets destroyed, what happens to the items inside of it? When magical phones break, the items return to where they came from, Poen. Event items will be generated again if the events repeat and shop items again if the events repeat and shop items return to the shop they came from, Poen. But if we don't install the items, can we physic or we can physically carry them, don't we? But if we don't install the items, we physically carry them, don't we? All items are just data. If you ins you have to install it to even use it. Even if you equip your weapons and armor, or use tools like cooking pots, if you don't install it, you can't use it, Poem. Okay. Although it was announced that death in the game was death in real life, this event was separated from the land of magic, and they know it's illegal. Right now, the mascot character Fall was being treated worse than a cockroach or a mite, hated by everyone. Flat pressed the help button, and naturally she asked questions to the mascot character. But it wasn't questions like, what's the point of all this, or is there a grudge among us? They were positive questions that would aid a player in clearing the game. She was really unusual, thought Shadow Gale, reconfirming her thoughts on her. Although it's only been three days, their ally who helped them advance in the game together, Masked Wonder, has died unbearably. And even though it was said that death wasn't limited to in-game, it didn't look like she was sad or shocked at all. Somehow they couldn't transmit their current situation to the Land of Magic, and no other magical girls could help them. A lot of opinions were given. Um, hold on, I lost my place. A lot of opinions were given, and none of them seemed to be good, so as a result, none of them were constructive at all. But were they better than being forced to... But were they better than being forced to dance in the palms of a powerful master in this game? There was an opinion that was put forward, that they cooperate beyond the boundaries of their own parties. The four party leaders discussed it at the town square, but Flan did it early and returned. Now they're in the first floor of a building within the mountain town, and Flo was facing Shadow Gale, a desk between them. This building was wider than the other ones, so although Flo was on her wheelchair, she could still move around with ease. Plus, there, plus, as there was no owner, no one could complain if she was being rude. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Fal. After she said thank you, Fal's ma er, Flo's magical phone screen began to change. The help screen disappeared, it was replaced by the item screen. One, now that's strange. You never told me what you got from that discussion, what happened? Before I tell you, there's something more I have to say. Before you tell me. Fall had gathered everyone in the Wasteland Town Square, there he announced some unbelievable things. While everyone was worrying on what to do, Flood dropped a bomb of a statement, asked Wonder's death, and that her items and candies were all stolen. Who was the culprit? Just remember, or just remembering that miserable death made Shadow Gale's chest hurt. Although Masked Wonder was an oddball, she was a good. She was still a good person. She was someone who was lured by the bandage-covered Fla, a strong person who would defend the weak, a magical girl of justice. There was no reason for her murder. If they were after Masked Wonder, then whoever the culprit was must have her own, or must have her coin. 
So they cooperated to find the culprit, checking their magical phones one by one, but the last one halted their efforts. The samurai magical girl refused to show her magical phone, and when the sci-fi magical girl approached her, she was slashed. That slash had killed her. However, because that slain girl has suddenly vanished, her two party members seem to be looking for her. Wherever she was, or wherever her corpse may be found, they couldn't contact her. The samurai also went berserk, slashing everything in sight. Slicing, slicing, killing. She even cut- Okay, so again, that's interesting that they went to look for her and her body's vanished. Um, I'm trying to think, because with the map on their phones or whatever, they could locate their team members, so can they still use that to look for her corpse, or her if she's alive, or, um, yeah, I don't know, can they use that to look for her, or if she's dead, does that sort of, uh, make it so that the, uh, tracking doesn't work? Actually, no, because they could still, um... Uh, Flea's team could still track Masked Wonder after she was dead, so they should be still able to use that to track, um, Jenna Psycho's body. So that's so weird, or at least her phone. It, it's so weird, because it's like, it's like you think maybe she died? You think maybe that slash had killed her? But, um, I don't know. It seems like her body's not there, and that doesn't make any sense for any of the people we've seen die so far. Um, but either way, um, if Flet hadn't been rescued by Shadow Gale, then she too would have been slashed and killed. It was natural for Shadow Gale to save Flet. They, um, they would, there would be no reward. Man, I don't know why I couldn't read that. If it still meant rescuing her, she probably should have kicked her away instead. Finally, she was entombed by a wasteland building. She fought with a Chinese-style magical girl. When she saw that the, ma the maid magical girl before her was about to be slashed and killed, she dropped a building on top of the samurai and crushed her. Shadow Gale was stunned by how many magical girls there are that could cause danger to the world. The Chinese-style magical girl sealed that building again in her scrolls. On the, center, on the center of the crater on the ground, there was a magical girl whose state Shadow Girl didn't want to remember. Her magical phone was in a completely unusable state. Its protective film was broken, the LCD was torn apart. Although there was no way to confirm if she had the item or not, she refused to show her magical phone. When she was asked, she simply sliced everyone, and no one else possessed the miracle coin, so she had to be the culprit. And so the search for the culprit ended there. Okay, so they... This is interesting. They can all assume it was Akane, but they don't really ever have proof. Because everybody else's phone was checked, so that would mean that she had to have the coin, but her phone was smashed, so they have no way of checking. Interesting. So, if that's the case, hold on, this is, I'm trying to put everything together here so I don't forget everything. So that means that she should be dead then. Akane should be dead. That was kind of quick, but either way, <laughs> that was pretty quick. But either way, and so the search for the culprit ended there. After that, they had opinions on what to do next, and the team leaders prepared a place for discussion. While the magical girls were discussing their option, her opinions, going, ah, yes, but of course, Shadow Gale held her head in confusion. How did the line switch this fast? Three people have already died. Furthermore, everyone was forced to play a game of life and death. Most people would be crying in confusion. Wasn't it strange that everyone was suddenly, calmly discussing good ideas? Was everyone trying to deceive her? Or did the building... hold on. Okay, she... A magical girl whose state Shadow Gale didn't want to remember, that should mean that she's dead, so if three people have died, then she's not counting Yuminashima in that total? Either way, continuing on. Everyone was forced to play a game of life and death. Most people would be crying in confusion. Wasn't it strange that everyone was suddenly calmly discussing good ideas? Was everyone trying to deceive her? Fle, who had ended the discussion early and returned, returned to her, spoke with a strong tone. Because of that, Shadow Gale's head boiled. Mamori, everyone else isn't as calm as you think they are. However, I am indeed, I am indeed quite calm. I know you're calm, my lady. Of course you do. If you're calm, Mamori, then I'd be calm as well. It's just like our test examiner when we became Magical Girl said. What was her name again? Well, doesn't matter. It's like she said. When you become a Magical Girl, you're not only strong physically, but mentally as well. Even fear will fade. Like I've been saying this whole time, my uh, theory that um, 
Clanberry was the one that uh, they're all children of Clanberry. Sounds very much like the case. Strong physically and mentally. That sounds like a Clanberry thing to say. Okay. Right. I don't think mine's fading that well. The Land of Magic seeks magical girls who exemplify magical girls. When the time comes, they would be saints who, wouldn't, who won't hesitate to sacrifice themselves, though I don't think I could fulfill that. She continued to state the obvious. Was she trying to convince her of something else? At town, I bought this item picture book. It's the item version of the monster picture book we bought in the Grasslands town. When she passed it on to Shadow Gale, Shadow Gale saw a list of items or of item names filling the screen of her magical phone. These are the item names. If you click on them, a graphic of the item will be displayed. If the names have three question marks on them, then it's an item not yet available. If you slide to the right, you'll see how to obtain it, how much it's sold for, and so on. Also, its benefits. What's this number? It was a large number, and in parentheses there was a smaller number. For example, the passes had 10,004 displayed on them. At first, you wouldn't really understand what they're for. Ah, your eyes found the good part. This one's important. The larger number is the item's upper limit, the possible amount you can obtain in the game, and the smaller number, the circulation number, is the number of items that are currently in someone's possession in-game. Based on these, observe carefully. Fleb pointed her finger at the miracle coin. She moved her finger to the right, stopping where they displayed the item's upper limit and circulation number. Those numbers were 1-1. One, one. Huh? That's not what? Shadow Gale tilted her neck. There's one that's still out there? That's right, one. Now, now that's strange, isn't it? Fla's tone was heating up. She looked like she was having fun. If a magical, if a magical, gr if a magical phone is destroyed, then the items inside to re return to where they came from. Event items will be gener, will be generated if the same event happens again. That's what Fall said. So if the katana swinging girl was our assassin, if she stole Masked Wonder's item, then when her magical phone was crushed by the building, the coin circulation number should have read zero, shouldn't it? It should only be generated again if the same event happened again, correct? If you don't install it in your magical phone, you have to carry it around, don't you? She could have hidden it somewhere. That's impossible. You can't use the item unless you install it first. Fall confirmed that. Then Fall's lying again. Fall won't lie. He would have said otherwise. Since then, he only speaks the truth. And you're just going to believe that. What if that's a lie too? What are you going to do then? Me. The temperature of the heat was slowly rising. Fleb placed her hands on the wheels of her wheelchair. When she did, she felt a slight rubber distortion. The air inside had nowhere to escape, so it's become quite disgusting. Unlike the great detectives like Detic Bell, when finding a culprit, I don't look for any evidence or try to break alibis. Instead, I listen. What are you talking about? Voice equality, appearance, clothing, gestures, body odor, tone, saliva, or sweat. In judging Fall's personality, he's missing these things. However, it's easy to pull out his character. He's resisting his master. He dislikes this game. He's on the player's side. And why do you say that you're different from a great detective? Because of the way we determine if a person is a culprit. I don't need evidence or alibis. When I think someone is a culprit, it's because I'm sure they're definitely the culprit. There's only one condition for someone to rise in a political landscape, and that's that they are someone who doesn't make mistakes. I do not misjudge people. Fall is cooperating with the players. Fly removed her hands from her wheelchair's wheels. Her white glossy palms were now black with dirt. Fly offered her hand to Shadow Gale. Shadow Gale wiped it with her handkerchief. Fall speaks the truth. The coin is still out there, which means the killer who stole Masked Wonder's item is still alive. While Shadow Gale was wiping the dirt off of Fla's hand, the heat in Fla's words began to cool down. Fla had become the usual Fla once more. It seems Yamanashima Genocyco has disappeared. Someone is doing something. If you really don't make mistakes, do you know who that someone is? Shadow Gale asked that with an air of sarcasm. Fla shrugged her shoulders with a calm face. I don't know yet. It's because I don't know that we should refrain from working with other parties from now. If we ally with everyone, then our possible enemy would be among them, shoulder to shoulder with us, don't you think? Man, so I, I really like that first scene. So freaking smart. Um, 
So it means somebody stole the item when they killed her, but they never used the item. They've kept it since then. At least that's what I'm getting from this. So, uh, yeah, at least that's what I'm thinking here. Either way, um, hold on, just checking stuff. Okay, continuing on to Detic Bell now. When Detic Bell told everyone the results of her magic her magical daisy investigation, she felt good. It was as if she was a real detective. Even though her life is in danger, she felt proud and enthusiastic. The problem came after. After the katana slicing assassin had been subdued, the team's leader's discussion never really reached the stage of completion. It instead tapered off to a weak ending. Noko-chan finished up early, telling them that she'd like to find the missing Yumenashima Genocyco as soon as she can. Fla said, once you've all decided a course of action, please do tell me. As if she wasn't a part of their party, she turned her face away and left. As for the one that remained, Detic Bell had said that even if they were the only ones left, they should still try to cooperate. Detic Bell didn't know what the silent clan tail was thinking. While her lower body was a horse, clan tail always loomed above Detic Bell, even if they were sitting down. The pressure of her silence was dreadful. Finally, she nodded, probably giving her consent. Although, probably, although since they haven't decided anything concrete, that consent was meaningless. Her exhausted and tired party returned to the Wasteland Town shop, but even there, another exhausting and tiring thing happened. This is heresy. This is unbelievable. Lapis Lazuline was being noisy. Her black hair was shoulder cut. She had pale brown eyes that looked very kind, and her, her noisiness far contrasted her nice clean look. What is... Yumenasima Genosyko, and it's spelled wrong. On the contrary, Melville's appearance was more flashy. Her orange hair was winding around, there were purple roses scattered around her. Contrary to her flashy hairstyle, she was quiet and rarely speaks. In the wasteland town square, we saw Yumenasima Genosyko from around the corner. Melville pointed at the shade of the building. No, that's impossible, because Yumenashima Genosyko is... She was killed in the streets of the Wasteland Town, is what Bell was trying to say. Noko-chan and Nat Nyanya went off to search for her whereabouts, because they have no idea now if she's alive or dead. It's interesting. Detic Bell... So, Melville saw her go somewhere? Interesting, hold on. Detic Bell had thought so that someone hid her body, for the people who still thought she was alive, she really wanted to tell them there's no way for a dead person to just show up alive again. She had a huge scar from her cheeks through her mouth and across her jaw, didn't she? But even then, it doesn't mean she was killed, right? At Lazaline's words, Melville nodded. But, but, you know, those scars, she was like Frankenstein, all stitched up together and stuff. Lazaline's face became amazed as she shouted. <laughs> Melville nodded. Then what happened? Did you call out to her? What did she say? She turned to us, but she can't really speak or anything. Her mouth's all sewn shut, you know? Plus, this wasn't a place where we could just go, hey, hello, or anything like that. So it's interesting. She was all Frankenstein and sewed up. Oh, maybe, like I said, maybe Shadow Gale did do that. Maybe that has something to do with her powers. Okay, keep, I'm going to keep moving along, though. The only one who would would even be noisy like that would be Lazaline and Cherna Mouse. It was hard to imagine Melville shouting. Oh, by the way, what happened to Cherna? Since Jenna Psycho ran off somewhere, she's been chasing her around. If she brought her back, then you'll be all, wow, you guys were telling the truth, won't ya? I never said you were lying. Really? Wow, Bel Belzy, I just thought that you had a doubtful aura going whoosh whoosh all around you is all. They definitely wouldn't lie to her, but they could still have made a mistake in what they saw. The rash Lazuline and aggressive Cherna would probably make mistakes, but if Melville was there, then there should be no mistake in what they saw, which means Genocyco is out there somewhere. Sewing her wounds together, did she do that herself? It was probably someone else that did it to her. Why did they do that without or why did they do that without using any healing medicine? Why is she acting independently without telling her party members? Detic Bell couldn't understand. Detic Bell grabbed her collar and looked away from Lazaline. Detic Bell looked at Melville. Melville nodded and nudged her face over to the shop. She's back. So, I'm thinking that maybe Shadow Gale's power is to maybe possibly zombify or Frankensteinify people. Uh, that could be possibly it, but we'll see. 
From the boundaries between buildings, someone running on all fours was approaching them. Just before she hit Melville, she sharply braked and stopped. Her footprints left traces on the ground and the dust began to gather. Detic Bell and Lazaline coughed without hesitation. The person that jumped before them, Chernamouse, raised her right hand. She's gone, she reported. She's gone? You mean Jenna Psycho? Yeah, she suddenly just disappeared. Cherna thinks she must have run super fast, and then, and then, she surprisingly didn't have a scent. So it really was a group hallucination. It wasn't an illusion. She was there. Chernamouse swung her sleeves around, and something fell out, rolling on the ground. Usually, she stores giant seeds in there. Melville, Lazaline, and Detic Bell all looked at what rolled over. It was a stone wrapped in crumpled paper. The stone rolled and the paper opened accordingly. They looked at the paper. On it they saw something. Beware of traitors. Huh, who wrote this? Nobody could answer Chernamouse's innocent question. Melville kicked the stone. Now the weightless piece of paper was blown away by the wind. Ah, it's flying away, shouted Chernamouse as she, as she ran off to chase it. What did you say in the discussion? So it seems like she's trying to change the subject, so... Maybe Melville is, um, sketchy. Oh, um, we all wanted to cooperate it with each other. Yet, is the opposite. Melville kept an eye on the stone at her feet. I wonder who wrote this. Who would do something bad? A friend of ours? That limits things. This is dangerous. It's hard to proceed. But separating at a time... <laughs> I love... I'm going all broken Matt Hardy with this accent just changing constantly between, like, Russian, French, and German. I'm just all over the place with this accent. But separating at a time like this... No. We're still at peace. That was the last thing she said. She didn't say any other words. I still don't... Yeah, that was kind of some sketchy stuff for Melville to say, but I like her. I'm just hoping she's good so badly. Uh, now we're moving on to Noko-chan, though. Again, a good scene. I like all these teams, and I really hope they come to peace and work together. Uh, moving along, though. Noko-chan. Noko-chan visited, visited a variety of places, and I'm glad that Jenna Psycho is still alive, or at least undead. Uh, Noko-chan visited a variety of places, but didn't find Jenna Psycho anywhere. Detic Bell's party said that they saw Jenna Psycho, so does that mean that she's alive? But Jenna Psycho never showed herself to Noko-chan. When they tried to find her location using the map application, only at Nyan Nyan's location was displayed on her map. Apparently, it didn't show the location of the person, but their magical phone instead. So that was useless. If you're alive... If you're al Hold on. Apparently it didn't show... But their magical phone... So was her magical phone broken then? If it showed her magical phone... Or do they have her magical phone and it's, um... Not with her body. Either way, if you're alive out there, at least show your face. Noko-chan thought about it, but didn't say it out loud. Ever since the battle in the town square, at Nyan Nyan's also been speaking rather slowly. Whenever Noko-chan saw her, it seemed like she was just staring off into the distance. Noko-chan had been desperately trying to spread emotions of happiness and joy to her, but she didn't know how effective it was. A game whose death is connection to real life. Genocyco's whereabouts unknown, and although her opponent was a murderer and a thief, At Nyan Nyan had killed her in the end. Did these thoughts plague At Nyan Nyan? It'd be nice if Genocyco showed up. Wow, At Nyan Nyan, you're really strong. Everyone should work together to survive. Noko Chen couldn't say any of those things. If she, if she said it, then At Nyan Nyan would remember some unpleasant memories. If she remembered those unpleasant memories, she'd continue to sink further. I've stopped being a magical girl, Ru. At mealtime, At Nyan Nyan suddenly said that. While eating the preserved meals, At Nyan Nyan didn't say anything else, and Noko Chan didn't either. The two of them were silent, only focusing on their nutrition, eat eating their disgusting meals. One thing that broke that silence was At Nyan Nyan suddenly speaking those words. It's been a while since Noko Chan heard her voice come out. You've stopped. What do you mean? It's just like what I said, Ru. Retirement from Magical Girls, Ru. Who? Me. Huh? At Nyan Nyan, you're a retired Magical Girl, then why are you participating in this game? That's a good question, isn't it? Noko Chan hesitated in consoling her. It didn't seem like she started talking just to gain sympathy. It didn't seem like she was complaining either. However, it's, it seemed like she was trying to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. At Nyan Nyan's facial expression was idle. Something horrible stopped it. 
Something horrible happened, so I stopped being a magical girl, Rue. Something horrible. She stopped there. If Fat Nyan Yam remembered any horrible thing, she'd start to feel horrible feelings. I can't remember anything about it, Rue. I know that I stopped being a magical girl because of something horrible, and I can't remember what ha er, but I can't remember what happened. Fat Nyan Yam slowly chewed on her preserved meal. Something horrible happened, so I stopped being a magical girl, but I participated in this game. Naturally, I thought it was a bit strange. She looked somewhat obsessed. It looked like God was judging her. It's clear. It didn't look like she was in a decent condition. At Nyan Nyan continued whispering roughly. On top of that building earlier, I cried. Tears came out. I was sad because I had killed someone. I was fighting someone I couldn't hold back on. I know that, but still. She looked up. There were no clouds in the sky. There were no stars. There was no moon. There was nothing. The darkness spread wide, and that darkness was reflected in Nyan, 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 Nyan Yan's eyes. The second. Was this the second time? If this was the second time, then if I can be better. The bushes moved. The leaves rubbed each other. Noka-chan stood up, her hand held by at Nyan, Nyan. Who's that, Ru? Her eyes were filled with intensity, her voice filled with awareness awareness. Who was there? Nokujan was surprised at how quickly At Nyan, Nyan became direct again. It's me. The wheelchair magical girl. Pushing her wheelchair from behind was the nurse magical girl. The wheelchair magical girl's name is Flet. She was a party member of the murder victim, Masked Wonder. The black nurse. What's her name? What was her name? The magical girl that accompanied Flet, she jumped in and saved her life before she was about to be slashed, but Nokujan couldn't remember her name. Do you remember us? My name is Fle, and this is Shadow Gale. Right, Fle and Shadow Gale. I came here with a request. Would you care to listen? We said we'd work together beyond our teams, right, Rue? If it's about that, there's no reason for me not to hear it. Nokuchen looked at At Nyan Yan. Her eyebrows were filled with determination. She appreciated that At Nyan Yan was being firm. While she didn't understand what was happening, that suddenly began to change. That made her uneasy. Detic Bell's team still seems insistent on keeping their territory. Every time we approach it, the 30 meter tall Cherna Mouse appears to threaten us. In the game, magical candies are required if they want to accomplish anything. In order to clear the game, they had to collect as much as they can. However, competing for it will only prolong the area clear goal. Unity between players is now disrupted. Because of this disruption, who will benefit in the end? That much was obvious. What exactly are you thinking of, Rue? You're not thinking of starting a fight, are you, Ru? Noko-chan could, he could hear the sound of that Nyan Nyan's gritting teeth. If you are, you should stop, Ru. I know the priority is clearing the game, but it doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter how people use the hunting grounds, Ru. Yes, you're right. However, even if I ask the others to stop, they won't listen. Like I said, I'm not going to risk my life in a fight, Ru. That's not why I'm here. I don't plan on doing that. What I need is your powers, actually. Interesting. Okay, moving on to page 17. Let me grab some water really, really quick. Shadow Gale. Currently, of all the open areas, the latest one is an urban area. Even though you'd call it a progressive city, there were still no humans in it. Actually, it felt more like a futuristic cyberpunk. Cables and cords were seen almost everywhere, even the entrance was a bit more irritating than the others. Unlike the wasteland, grassland, and mountain areas, which were wide open spaces, the urban area was a maze. It took some time to get used to the environment. The shops also had weapons and armor. Until now, the shops have always increased their stats by pluses. This time it's a plus five. Shadow Gale purchased her plus five weapons, and after she installed it, it became a wrench. When she tried to swing it around, it felt dreadful. Clearly, the player was supposed to think that. While she rolled it using her palm, she couldn't escape that feeling. The monsters that appeared were called guard robots. They looked like humanoid robots that would show up in a robot anime. According to the picture book, there were four types. Attackers, defenders, shooters, and generals. They attacked using electric shockers, small missiles, body tackling, etc. Compared to the goblins and the skeletons, they were quite powerful. Because of their strength, they also had huge candy drops. In addition, they had a 1% chance of dropping a rare item. Arm parts, leg parts, body parts, and head parts, for example. 
Those parts can be used to purchase more expensive items in the shop. However, for players like Shadow Gale, she saw no meaning in selling these parts at the shop. Shadow Gale's magical skill is her remodeling magic. Using her wrench and scissors, she can improve almost anything. The quality of pictures in your TV, fuel consumption in your cars, your PC's memory, she could use her magical skill for those kinds of simple and pleasant things. Okay, so interesting. Wrench and scissors, she can improve things. Alright. Now, Shadow Gale was desperately moving both her hands. The various parts were all being remodeled with Fle's wheelchair. They had asked other party members to help collect those parts. When they suggested a battle against Cherna Mouse, almost everyone happily agreed. Shadow Gale knew just how much everyone hated that party. Aside from collecting materials, they also approached at Nyan Nyan and asked her for help in transporting them. Flo's remodeled wheelchair, due to the unreasonable remodeling request, has dropped sharp in its mobility. Furthermore, since she was rushing this, it would, it would both save time and be easier for everyone if they'd just transport it somehow. The parts were slowly being gathered up, never being lost even though she kept using it. Shadow Gale's work never, seems to be never-ending. Flo was on her magical phone. She seems to be reading something. Um... What's wrong, Mamori? How long am I supposed to do this for? Until it is satisfactory. And who would that satisfaction be based on? She didn't feel like Fle could answer even if she asked. I have one thing to say. What is it? While working, I've been thinking of something about some things. My, my, I didn't know you could multitask. It's about Masked Wonder's killer. Oh, do you think it's at Nyan Nyan? Shadow Gale did think that at Nyan Nyan did something quite extraordinary. However, contrary to her expectations, Fleck continued looking at her magical phone calmly. Shadow Gale continued to work, and she worked for several more minutes before Fleck replied. Momori, when you doubt someone, do you need evidence? You're a different type of person than me. Most people are different than Fleck. If you want to be arrogant like her, you need a special kind of talent. Well, that's true. Why do you think At Nyan Nyan is the culprit? I'd like to hear. Because she was fighting that samurai in the town square, she was flinging bolt. When she was fighting her in the town square, she was flinging boulders at her. I see. It does seem like quite, to be quite a useful magical skill. She flung boulders out from her scrolls. She even flung out buildings too. Not only that, she pulled in those buildings back into her scrolls. Those buildings and boulders were things that Shadow Gale, Gale saw in game. At Nyan Nyan had the magical seal, magical skill of sealing objects in her scrolls, didn't she? Well, Master Wonder's head was crushed with the stone, wasn't she? Is that your basis? Because that Nyan Nyan used boulders, is that it? Of course not. It's just that it's one of those things that makes her suspicious is all. Oh, so what's the nail in the coffin? The coin. Shadow Gale spun her wrench and cut some parts off with her scissors. Because of this, or because this wasn't exactly how you fundamentally remodel things, she doesn't really understand what she's doing. She's just messing around with tools, doesn't really know what she's doing. At Nyan Nyan had that huge building in one of her scrolls. If that's possible, then she could store data in her scrolls without it going through a magical phone, the ultimate cheat code. If she, if she doesn't install it in her magical phone, she has to carry it around somehow, right? See? And this is uh, something that I brought up as well. Shadow Gale tightened her expression. Like an elementary school student guessing an answer, she looked at Fla who's still keeping her eyes on her magical phone. Your reasoning isn't bad, right? Perhaps I may have misjudged you, Mamori. Shadow Gale was wondering what kind of person Fla was thinking of. Okay, now we are at page 20, and uh, I'm going to keep trying to soldier through. Let's keep going. Detic Bell, when you act as a magical girl, whether it's mysterious or strange things, there's usually lots of opportunities to encounter them, and you'd usually be the first to do so. However, this site that Detic, this site that Detic Bell is currently looking at, it can't possibly be real. Also, I don't like the idea of the team spotting. I think they should work together, even though Cherna's team is being selfish. I will throw that part out there. It can't possibly be real. It should be around several kilometers away, yet its battle flames were burning, making it impossible to feel any relief, even though it only moved a bit. The sound it produced and the dust cloud that resulted were before it were astounding. 
Trina Mouse towered over 30 meters tall, and just before her was a 30 meter tall... What should they even call this thing? At first glance, it looked like a crab, but it's definitely not a crab. It was made of full-on machines. Fleck called it a ten-leg spider tank, didn't she? The earth shattered and dust flew as Cherna Mouse ran towards it, grasping the ten-leg tank. During that impact, you could feel the sound and shock combined all the way from here. So pretty much, she made Shadow Gale build her a mecha to fight, <laughs> to fight against Cherna with. Both her arms and legs were pushing hard, but the eight remaining arms of the tank took advantage of the opening. It attacked Chernomouse's flank. Her equilibrium broke and Chernomouse was pushed down. They were hidden by the smoke. Chernomouse began to withdraw by rolling back halfway. The wasteland buildings were destroyed and crushed, all of them demolished without remains by Chernomouse's gigantic body. Even though Chernomouse left the battle, the spider tank didn't try to chase her. It simply stayed in its spot. Something protruded out of where you would normally have a crab's eyes, and it, sh and it shining, it shined glaringly. I think they meant. Um, an explosion was ignited just in front of the tank. It was firing a laser beam. Jonah Mouse was blown back, rolling further. Three buildings were caught and collapsed. After the shadow of the tank loomed over them, they all just disappeared. Even though Bell was watching from above a building far away from the battle. She could see the scale of the destruction. Novel gently furrowed her right eye. Every time Chernomouse was attacked, Lapis Lazuline screamed and became noisy. The flow of the battle is becoming clearer. The ten-legged tank is winning. It was overwhelming Cherna with its multiple attacks, its speed, and its jumping capability. No one had thought that Chernomouse, a magical girl that, that seemed to be able to win against anything, would be defeated in this way. Neither Melville nor Lazuline wanted her to lose. However, Desic Bell was perfectly fine with her losing. She even hoped that she would be defeated. Earlier this morning, she had an offer. I'd like to request a duel without any loss of life. While Detic Bell's team was having breakfast, she was visited by the wheelchair magical girl and the black nurse, Flan Shadowgale. The first thing they said was an offer to battle. Bell's head was immediately filled with question marks, but she understood the intentions of the following words. If I win the duel, you will stop occupying the hunting grounds. Your actions are backed by force. Therefore, if we prove we are stronger than you, then you'll leave with no problems, won't you? Melville did tell you that, didn't she? Only the strongest are fit to make the rules. Belle promised to reply at a later time. For now, she'd return back to her home base. When Detic Bell returned to her party members, there was an immediate argument between them. Is it true that you've been locking out other parties from the hunting grounds? Yeah, it's true. Chernomouse didn't feel bad about it at all. Why would you do something like that? We we're supposed to work together with everyone, aren't we? I didn't know that. In order to open the next area, they had to infiltrate the urban area central security headquarters. To do that, they need a password. She tried to discuss with the other parties about how to find it, but their reactions weren't pleasant at all, almost as if they didn't want to speak. Now Belle understood why. Don't I didn't know me? Even now you need to apologize, Cherna. Make it up to everyone somehow. No, Cherna didn't do anything wrong. Cherna won't lose the duel. She couldn't reason with her. She was someone who'd rather talk with force instead. Lazuline folded her arms and said, Fighting's not good, while nodding her head. <laughs> She's useless. Detic Bell turned towards Melville. Stop this. I won't. She closed her eyes, her eyelashes fluttering in the wind. That's right. Chernomouse doesn't do anything by herself. She needs permission. Chernomouse only listens to Melville. Listen, we still have a villain among us. Stopping this is impossible. We must continue. What Melly's saying here is that we could cooperate, but there's still a bad guy hiding as one of us. If that's what you're saying, then... If that's what she's saying, then there's no guarantee that even this party is completely innocent. But she couldn't say that. That's something that she couldn't afford to speak out now. Detic Bell bit her lip. She felt the taste of her blood. Chernomouse's magical skill is to become huge. It was a simple kind of magic. Simple but powerful. You'd easily get hurt from an attack of a large opponent, but a large opponent wouldn't be hurt by your own attacks. The monsters always gave them a hard time, but honestly, out of the four of them, if Chernomouse was there, she could handle them all. This time, the opponent was designated... The opponent's designated dueling area is the wasteland. Cherna Mouse was the best in open spaces. Even though it is wide, the buildings dotted across the area shouldn't be an obstacle. 
Cherna didn't listen to Detic Bell's restraints. About one hour after they agreed to battle, Cherna became gigantic. Detic Bell, Melville, and Lazaline were all watching from atop a building far away. With the wasteland as the battlefield, who could oppose a monster like her? At Nyan Nyan's at Nyan Nyan headed towards a dueling area. Was she strong enough? Certainly she was strong, but was she tough enough? She threw a single scroll, it fluttered off into the air, and boo and a boom of an explosion later, once the smoke cleared, a gigantic crab like machine was standing in the area. Its body was cylindrical, and sensors that seemed equivalent to eyes shone like a bright light. Layered on its side seemed to be several stacked armor plates, and overall, it had an appearance of heaviness about it. From its body, the ten legs that sprouted forth started moving quickly in small increments, two joints on each leg, the tips were pointed, covered with thick armor plates on its surface. Whenever it moved, whirr, boom, crash. Mechanical sounds came out, the whole body was black and metallic, there were no angular bits at all. It was all completely rounded. Unlike real crabs, there are no parts that are equivalent to pincers. Apart from the number of legs, it actually looks more like a spider. Its size was about as big as Cherna, though its weight may be even heavier. Either way, it was huge. While carrying Flay on her back, Shadow Gale ran up its legs, opened the lid on the tank's body, and literally kicked Flay down the lid, <laughs> closed it, and ran away. Well, let's begin the duel. Because the voice came through the speakers, it was huge and loud. There was no mistaking that it was Fle. While Chernomouse was surprised, she didn't have any fear. The battle began. Chernomouse was inferior. She was in trouble. At this rate, she won't win. Truthfully, Detic Bell wanted her to lose. While Detic Bell had tried to cooperate, her team was really uncooperative. If Cherna loses, then the other party's sourness would also stop. Then relationships can finally be formed. The tank's eyes shined again, and another explosion took place. Chernomouse was blown back, her body rumbling and shaking. Her body shook like it was feverish, her posture was lowered, and she crossed her arms in front of her face, protecting herself from any further attacks. From her figure, you could see that she hated getting hit. Stop this, Cherna's already lost. Melville only looked at the battlefield. At this rate, Cherna could be killed at worst. I know they said they won't kill her, but look at what's happening. Close your ears, said, um... And that's, um, Melville talking. Cherna Mouse spread her legs out wide, raising her waist at the same time, while keeping her elbows bent. She opened her arms up wide. Cherna opened her mouth wide. That would cover about a third of her face, and her throat began to tremble. She barked out. The tank that seemed extremely heavy began to shake, its claws on the ground enduring. The buildings nearby crumbled, and the smoke it produced blew off. Just before Cherna Mouse began to bark, Detic Bell closed her ears, opening her mouth, opened her mouth, and fell down. Everything shook because of the loud noise. Her barks were fierce. Until now, she's never done this before. Cherna Mouse turned turned her head towards the tank, placed both hands in front of her mouth. Detic Bell rubbed her eyes. Something strange was happening. Cherna, who was supposed to have stopped her legs, seems to be getting closer. The tank's eyes glistened and another explosion happened. However, compared to the last explosion, this one was much smaller. Chernomouse's outfit was already black and soot. With how small this explosion was, Cherna also shook lightly. Then Detic Bell noticed it. Chernomouse wasn't getting closer. The explosion wasn't smaller than before. Chernomouse was growing. She was already more than half the size of the tank, twice the size, three times she kept growing larger. A small black sphere, about two meters in diameter, was ejected from the tank's spherical body, shooting far behind it, landing and rolling on the ground. What was that? Before she could even think those thoughts, Sharon and shortened the distance between her and the tank. In half a step, she crushed the tank with her body. Detic Bell looked up at the sky. So, <laughs> Sharon actually won. Poor Detic, having to deal with this nonsense. Um, my computer is actually almost dead. So I'm going to stop recording now and then charge it for a bit and then uh, either record later in an hour or so or I'll record um, or I'll have to record tomorrow and then I'll have it up whenever I'm done with everything. But uh, yeah, man, kind of kind of bummed that they won because I wanted everybody to work together. But I guess this keeps things um, keeps things exciting, I guess. I don't know. Uh, either way, like I said, we'll be back to continue recording this later. Alright guys, I'm back. Also, um, 
sorry, the video I recorded before this one had my hair falling all in my face and I hate wearing a hat all the time in like every single video, but um, yeah, I guess I'm still wearing it. I was wearing it in the first part, I think. But basically last night, um, real quick before I continue reading, uh, it stormed last night so I couldn't record the second half or the rest of the chapter then. So I'm back recording the last like 10 to 12 or so pages now. Um, and some thoughts I had just thinking about what I'd read so far and wanting to read the rest last night, just some thoughts I've had, is that, um, because I didn't get to discuss much, because I was kind of in a rush given the time frame I had, um, I mean, I wasn't rushing it, but I didn't have a ton of discussion, but, um, I do like that Detic Bell's trying to work together with everyone, and I really wish everyone would work together, and that could have happened, but damn it, Cherna won. Cherna can apparently get larger, and it said she put her hand to her mouth, so what I think is when she eats the giant sunflower seeds or whatever is when she gets giant. Maybe she just took a handful of them and like overcharged her ability. In which case maybe that's a drawback is that she only has a certain amount produced within a certain time. So she can't, um, so maybe now she's used them up and when she goes back to normal size she'll have to wait a while for them. Uh, also, I I really like Shadow Gale. I think Shadow Gale, we didn't get to see Clan Tail much, which is a shame. Shadow Gale could be the new number one contender for Clan Tail's best girl title. Um, I, I really like Shadow Gale. I thought it was funny how she's like working on stuff with a wrench and scissors, but she doesn't actually know what she's doing. She's just moving her hands and stuff is magically happening. Um, I thought that was hilarious, and the way she turned Fle's wheelchair into like a giant mecha. Uh, we we go from first season and the sort of except for magical girls realism of it to when they make an uh, it, hopefully when they make an anime of the second season, it will be like mecha fight versus giant going on. Um, but yeah, I really like that, and I am assuming that was her wheelchair transformed into the mecha because it said. Um, Shadow Girl's powers were to improve things, so I don't really see how improving the parts would make them into a robot. That would kind of be building uh, the parts, or building the robot using the parts. So I think she just took the parts and used them with her ability to improve the wheelchair until it became a mecha. In which case, uh, they're going to have to scrap it back down into a wheelchair, I guess. Um, and of course they used that Nyan Nyan to transport it, and Nyan Nyan is they sort of questioned if maybe she was the murderer and I'm thinking maybe could be uh, also Melville and I feel like I feel like Melville and um, Cherna are like false leads I think they're trying to make them look suspicious what with that note and everything I think they're trying to make them look suspicious but I think it's a misleading thing I don't think Melville or Cherna are actually the uh, spies or the bad guys. I still think it might be somebody like um, some outside force. Like I said, Daisy fakes her own death at the beginning because uh, she seemed too OP to go down quite like that. And I mean, I think the whole pride being her downfall thing works, but if she faked her own death and is actually the master behind the scenes, uh, just I think those are my two theories. I think Daisy could be the master behind the scenes, and I think that they're all children of Clanberry because of what the uh, person said in the, um, the what is it called, master side or something like that. Um, so that could be possible. And I still think that uh, the person who murdered Masked Wonder is, I don't know, the person, I'm thinking at Nyan Nyan is kind of suspicious, but she doesn't seem like the type who would do that, and I still think that my number one guess would be it's an outside force. It's somebody that did it uh, like the master or the something like that, and the master did it in order to make them think there's a spy, even if there is, really isn't one. Um, <clears throat> and that way, they'd always be at each other's throats, and they would never get anything solved. Also, surprised that Akane died so quickly without us getting to know, like, anything about her. She showed up, tried to kill some people, ended up killing a person, and then is dead. And also, the person that she ended up killing is now seemingly alive, but stitched up. So I'm thinking that, I mean, we know that's not Shadow Gale's power now, but how how is she up and sewed up and walking? Somebody... Does somebody have the power to make zombies or Frankenstein people? 
uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for sure. Um, so yeah, of course, if you know the answers to any of that, I'm just thinking aloud and discussing what I think at this point. Don't spoil it, of course. Uh, but either way, moving along. Uh, we're starting off at Petchka on page 27, and of course you guys have been watching, so of course you're probably not off. It's just me. Uh, sorry about that once again. But uh, let's continue on. Petchka had been deceived. If you die in the game, you die in real life. But she couldn't run away, she couldn't continue the game, she couldn't do anything at all. The next area after the urban area was the underground area. When they passed through the gate, they entered a small room. There they opened a lid on the floor and went inside. I'm kind of bummed we didn't get to see them do the attack on that central place in the uh, urban area. But either way, whatever. Opened a lid on the floor and went inside. Okay. From there, they'd already reached this underground world. It, was, it wasn't some artificially made underground dungeon either. This area actually looks like more of a natural cave system. Ah, oh, that's interesting. It was all damp and slippery, including the floor. That's actually more interesting than an underground dungeon, because, I mean, we've seen underground dungeons before. This is different. Pechka raised her right leg, slipped, and fell down. Nako tried to help her up, but she fell down anyways. When she hit her back on the ground, it seemed like tears started flowing down. Both the pathways' depth and width varied depending on where they were. That was natural. As it was a cave, it was also very chilly, damp as well. Definitely not an easy place to spend your time in. Phle and Chernomouse's giant monster battle ended up being won by Chernomouse. Although Phle's escape pod managed to work and saved her life, if it hadn't worked, then naturally she would have died. Oh, so Cherno would have went for the kill. Huh. Even though Petchka wasn't able to see it, she was still scared as if she was in the middle of it. She heard the story from Miyakata Nanako and Rianetta and understood what happened. What happened. Fled did well. If it was any other magical girl besides Fled, they would have gotten killed instantly by Chernam House. Collecting the parts they needed was hard, but no one could blame Fled. She did well. People told her she did her best, and they all separated. Detic Bell's party won't stop doing what they're doing. The next day, they opened the underground area. Fle had apparently solved the cryptogram for the area opening event, which she did during the preparations to fight Cherna Mouse. Solving the puzzle for the next area while preparing for battle, no one so far has been working as hard as her on these things. Petchka and Nako's scouting group decided to act together alongside... hold on, lost my place. Act together alongside the battle group. It's not that the scouting group was useless, it's just that the area clear event hasn't shown up, so they were doing general events that gained them items and candies. Okay. Simply put, dividing up their strength would only be painful for them. The enemies in the underground area were strong. It wasn't enough for just Rionetta and Clantail. While Pechka merely stood her ground, Nako joined in the struggle. The weapons that they purchased in the urban area, although they were robust and easy to use, it doesn't mean they could rely on the strength of the weapon alone. Okay, this is interesting. Does, uh, does um, Nanako still have um, her, uh, her goblin, though, I'm wondering? Either way. Or does she have... she, she has found no other, uh, no other helpers yet, I guess? But either way, Rianetta especially had guessed that this was part of the plan. In order to clear the game, the players had to unite together. However, some players refused to unite. They had to make uniting the players a priority. Rianetta spoke hotly, and Clantail swung her head vertically. Suddenly, Rianetta whispered in Pechka's ear, Oh, don't you fret about a thing, Pechka. You're under my protection. Miyakata Nanako immediately looked back at her, and also blurted out, What is going on? Or, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to uh, change my stuff, change my inflection for that. What is going on? Oh, nothing to do with you, I assure you. Pechka is with my search group. That means we're like si we are like sisters. Where on earth does that lo kind of logic even apply? As usual, they argued and argued with each other. Everyone really was irritated, and to know that they could die... No one really wanted to play the game, and as they were frustrated, er, and they were frustrated that they couldn't do anything more than that. Still, things seem to be better than before. They've probably acknowledged Pechka's existence among them. They had meals three times a day. Their Pechka was always the protagonist. 
At least during mealtime, Pechka was respected. Rianetta pinched Pechka's cheeks. Niakata Nanako praised her with some English mixed in. She was happy with the two of them. Pechka felt motivated. As they walked through the underground passages, they came across a rare dome-shaped open area. There, a dragon appeared. The dragon was around two meters long, with a wingspan of around with a wingspan of around four meters in size. It looked like a dragon that came out of a fantasy story, though it was slightly smaller than the common dragon images. For fighters, they definitely weren't friendly opponents. Clantil shot a translucent string-like substance from her behind. It wrapped around the dragon's wings. The dragon screamed out like a bird caught in a web. Every time the dragon tried to escape, Clantil pulled it towards her. So Clantil turned into a uh, spider, essentially. <laughs> Shooting a string-like substance from her behind is is putting it quite vague, um, original author. Um, the two of them competed in their strength. When they both stopped their movements, Rionetta jumped at that timing, extended her arms, and swinging her claws. Despite the dragon's hard scales, she still managed to tear its throat. Its blue scales ripped off, followed by the red color of its blood. Couldn't uh, the dragon have just been tamed by Nanako, though? Wouldn't that have been better for them? They could have used it? Either way. Because they were fighting in an underground area, Clan Tail usually ha took the lower half of a giant spider. Her yellow patterns on her black abdomen meant that she was venomous. <laughs> she moved her legs. I love that, uh, that logic. She moved her legs in a skitter-skitter kind of way, and her spider body was huge, with its hairs shabbily standing up terrifyingly. Just by approaching Pechka, it caused Pechka to fall down. She used to look so cute when she was a deer or a pony. Because of the slippery surface of the underground area, a spider would be better than any hoofed animal. A dragon fell from above, making an earth-shattering sound as it landed on the ground. When the two of them began to stab the fallen dragon, they changed their equipment. Miyakata and Nanako checked up on the fallen dragon. The last dragon they faced engaged in an aerial battle with them, but the balance fell towards the three magical girls and the dragon was knocked down. Everyone came out of the fight unscathed. Of course, Pechka did, because she didn't participate in the battles. Pechka filled her items with healing medicine. Nako used them to heal up the fallen dragon, who was a beast in itself. The cute pet goblin that she had was dismissed as soon as they defeated a dragon. Now the dragon was the one decorated with a ribbon. Okay, so she has replaced the goblin with a dragon now. As the goblin was now useless, it started to run away, but from behind, the dragon took it down with one stroke. Seeing that, Nako said, Oh, strong, powerful, cute. She seemed delighted. It seems she really didn't have any attachment to the cute goblin after all. Poor go poor goblin. Rip goblin coon. Goblin coon just got used by Nanako. <laughs> Maybe it was a foreign thing. Petchka wouldn't understand. They walked around with the dragon, found hunting grounds that weren't being occupied by chair and a mouse. From there, they looked for dragons, killed them, collected their candy and rare item drops, and used the candies to buy any recovery items and o any other useful items to purchase. In the underground town, there were amulets on sale. The red amulets make you stronger against enemies with a fire attribute. They also had to find a technique in order to distinguish a dragon's type. They've abandoned scouting entirely. The four of them focused on hunting rather than scouting activities, since it's more efficient that way. They left the area open, or the area opening activities to other parties. Although nobody really said anything, they surely had the same thought. At least Pechka did. They'll leave the game clearing to other players, since some of the ones occupying the good hunting spots weren't willing to cooperate. Passive candy gathering is better than nothing. The nothing part of, this is better than doing nothing, would be best suited to categorize Pechka. She was only active in carrying items, but no one complained about that. Any discussion seemed to be hosp- Any discussion seemed to be hospital, I think they meant hospitable. Um, Everyone always looked forward to meal time, so much so that whenever a time for meals whenever a time for meals were was approaching, everyone's atmosphere turned brighter. Since they managed to get some tableware through the R item, the variety of dishes that Pechka could make increased. They called it delicious. If it was delicious, Pechka was glad. This is fine, as long as nothing else happens, this is fine. This is at that time her magical phone began ringing. She forgot that before logout time there was a force teleporting. 
And now, Noko-chan. Okay, let me grab some uh, water really quick. I like that. I like a skitter, skitter, spotter, <laughs> clan tail. Um, and just that group in general. That group, I don't know. I guess everybody can't survive, but I like that group. Sad, sad for Goblin Coon though. Poor Goblin Coon got got used and then killed. Um, so either way, moving on, we have Noko Chan now. Three days have passed. The magical girls were gathered up once more in the streets of the wilderness town. The atmosphere was bad. Fla was defeated by Cherna Mouse, but Detic Bell's party didn't seem like they were enjoying themselves. In fact, Detic Bell separated herself from her team. They may not be feeling well. Fla lost her wheelchair. Noko Chan had heard that the spider tank was Fla's wheelchair remodeled. Now it was destroyed. Flo was muttering something to Shadow Gale. The two of them were talking about something. The one that opened the underground area was Fla. She managed to do that while preparing for combat. That in itself made Noko Chan tremble in fear. Clantel's party, Miyakata, Nanako, and Rionetta were arguing. <laughs> she could see them arguing, but she couldn't imagine what they're arguing about. Clantail and Pechka acted as if nothing was wrong. At Nyan Nyan, however, seemed seems to have regained her energy. As usual, Genocyco still hasn't shown herself, yet she still seems to be alive, so perhaps she was saved. Detic Bell's party had informed them that they saw Genocyco, and although it was uncertain and possibly misleading, it was something to hold on to. There has to be a reason why Yamanashima's out there, Ru, said at Nyan Nyan. Unlike, um, unlike when she was grieving, she truly felt alive. The underground area monsters were strong. Noko-chan had amulets that changed her attack attributes. With, even with her mop plus five, she finally... Damn it, Noko-chan, the mop plus five, <laughs> the cutest thing. Uh, she fought hard against them, while at Nyan Nyan overwhelmed them with her summoning. However, even though they were a party of two, they overcame many things. When Noko-chan had an idea, a party of two and a... Hold on. Then Noko-chan had an idea. A party of two and a party of two, she should combine with Fle's party. If we combine together into one party, her thoughts stopped there. As soon as she remembered Genocyco, her thoughts cancelled all of the er, all plans of that. She was still alive. They couldn't do this plan. If they did, she'd be deleted from their party, no. So it's impossible. There would be no way to convince that Nyan Nyan who was still sticking with Genocyco. At the fountain in the middle of the square, a magical phone that could belong to anyone was laid upwards. This was a familiar sight, but one Noko didn't want to get used to. After a while, the magical phone turned on and a stereoscopic image appeared. Thank you all for gathering, poem. Fal, who last time had been scowled on, seemed like just a dream. As before he showed no emotions when talking, he only floated. There were no more people shouting to hurt him, because it was unconstructive, not positive and not good. It wouldn't solve anything. And so, they just felt apathetic. Today is everyone's logout day, Pwn. You'll all log out as sunset, or you'll all, you'll all log out at sunset simultaneously. As usual, there will be a three-day maintenance period before you log back in, Pwn. Fall rotated vertically after that, the golden sprinkles falling down from around him. Just as before, a randomized special event will be launched, Pwn. Today's event is... Fall's voice began to, be, began to become distorted and choppy. Everyone was silently waiting for him to finish his... for a sentence to finish. Fall was silent and stopped moving. In the last event, Fle had won an overwhel with an overwhelming victory. What kind of event will happen this time? Fall's image deformed and expanded, with noises loudly distorting. Even though Fall had no expressions on his face, it seemed like he was suffering. Everyone, please check the amount of magical candies on your magical phone. Noka Chan checked her magical phone. Her candy amount was 2,651. Since there was only two people in their party, they only had to divide by half. But their efficiency in eliminating monsters is surely less than a four-man party. Oh, this is going to be one of the bad events, isn't it? He's going to kill whoever has the least candies or something like that. Isn't he? But their efficiency in eliminating monsters is surely less than a four-man party. Healing medicine, monster picture books, attack attribute changing amulets, passes, individual weapons, teleporters, and any items they may, may need have all been bought. 
Still, compared to other parties, they probably don't have much. Fifteen minutes from now, the player with the least amount of candies will die, Poem. Of course, season one us. Um, the entire town square became quiet once again. After a few seconds, the angry screaming and shouting began. Miyakata, Nanako, and Rionetta began to argue once more. I told you not to squander our candies on those R items. Excuse me? Who was the one who said rice bowls are so delicious? Delicious? <laughs> the party members didn't stop worrying. The other parties kept screaming at Fall, but Fall just repeated the same message over and over. It can't be changed, Pone. I'll say it one more time, Pone. In fifteen minutes, the person with the lowest amount of candy will die, Pone. Nokuchan had a thought. Candies could be transferred. They could also reverse it, which means they could steal candies from them. In fifteen minutes, will the strong steal from the weak? She looked around her surroundings, even to the ones that were acting abusively. Basically, everyone was discussing in their parties. Perhaps they were planning to steal candies, and since Nokuchan's party was inferior in number, that puts them in a bad spot. She felt afraid, but then Nokuchan canceled that emotion in a hurry. She closed her eyes and optimistically thought that it won't happen. Nokuchan didn't want to propagate any horrible emotions. She wondered if everyone was aware of the hidden motive that this was encouraging competition between them. No one seems to be doing anything. Yeah, again, it all seems aimed to make them start fighting amongst each other, which is why I think some uh, outside force killed... Um, I think the outside force hid the note with um, Cherna, and um, it also was the thing that killed um, uh, Masked Wonder. Whoever this outside force is, probably the master themselves or something, um, I think that uh, may be possible. Um, no one seems to be doing anything. Fla's party was also two people. However, Fla lost her weapons and was now being carried on Shadow Gale's back. Noko Chen looked at Fla's party. Fla was facing Fall. Fall. Despite the hus hustle and bustle, Fla's voice managed to pass through it all. Even Noko Chen, who was far away, was able to hear Fla's question. You say that there would be one person with the least amount of candy. What if more than one person has the least amount? Would it be randomly selected? Or do they all die at once? Fall breathed in. If more than one person has the least amount of candy, then no one will be chosen, Poem. The event will be completed with zero deaths, Poem. When Fla heard those words, she had a mischievous smile on her face. You're probably relieved that I pointed out that there could be more than one person with the least amount, aren't you? Regardless of Fla, Fall continued to repeat the announcement. I repeat, Pone, when there's multiple people with the least amount, no one will be chosen, Pone. The event will end here with zero deaths, Pone. There was something that seemed like an uproar. So all we have to do is temporarily make everyone's candies the same number, right, Rue? Eh? Cherno wasn't, doesn't want to reduce her candies. When the event's over, we can all go back to our original numbers. That's fine, isn't it? Of course it is, Pone. Once the event is over, then the number of candies no longer matters, Pone. But do we really want to make everyone have zero candies? You expect us to shop with or you expect us to shop with zero candies? Throw all of it away? I shall accept neither. Why don't we all share the candies into someone's magical phone? If we do that what happens? If they run away? Who would we even give to? What Melly's trying to say is, it's going to be bad if they run away. Who are we supposed to give our candies to? Which I agree. What happens if we put we put it outside of our phones? Eh, magical candies are just numbers. They're not actual items, Pone. You really shouldn't be putting it outside of your magical phone, Pone. Then we should average everyone's total candies and have everyone um, have matching amounts, shouldn't we? If that's the case, then everyone should announce their candy amount. We need honest counts. Don't announce more and don't announce less than what you have. Don't forget to check the next person beside you. Check their phone as well. That extra sentence added, the, added at the end, check the next person beside you. It seems like it was because they expected a hidden malicious intent. Yet, it was relieving to know no one's going to steal from each other. All the abuse, anger, and sorrow had disappeared. Everyone began to slowly move. Noko-chan didn't have to manipulate their emotions. Somebody's going to screw somebody, though. It's a, it, we're going to have a ruler situation. Somebody's going to screw somebody. Magical girls are realistic and practical. 
They have fantastical magical abilities, and although they were forced to be in this kill-or-be-killed game, no matter when, no matter where, no matter which magical girl, if there's a way to solve something peacefully, then they'll all move towards it. After they announced how much candy they had, Fla mentally calculated its average value. There was a remainder of three, so she decided she'll have three more than the average because of that. There should be more than one person that has the least amount of candy. Surprisingly, at Nyan Nyan and Noko-chan had more candies than average. Unlike the other parties who were competing for hunting grounds, they never actually, or they never actively hunted down monsters. They also really never bought our items. They may need candies in an event at some point. Ah, so them saving their money turned out to work for them, and not fighting with other groups. At Nyan Nyan took out Jenna Psycho's magical phone as well. Jenna Psycho's magical phone still had an unchanged number of candies. Okay, so see, she does still have the magical phone there. Okay, that makes sense of why they couldn't use it to track her. Ever since she performed the area clear event, now and now the number of candies that the monsters are dropping have increased, while the number of people they need to divide it up has decreased. Noko-chan took care of operating Jenna Psycho's phone. The other magical girls also added and subtracted candies from their phones. What if, like, right at the end or something, when they're about to, um, uh, when they're about to end this 15 minutes, the number goes up on, um, Jenna Psycho's phone. Like, she killed a monster somewhere, and that's the way to know she's alive. That would be really, that'd be a really cool, that'd be the way I would write it. That would be crazy. But either way. Noko-chan took care of operating Jenna Psycho's phone. The other magical girls also added and subtracted candies from their phones. The magical girls all made a huge circle around the fountain of the town square, working together and exchanging their candies. This way, no one could do anything suspicious to each other. Man, this whole scene is really exciting, though. I was not expecting anything this, like, tense and exciting. Hence, the number of candies were all equal. Other than Fla, everyone had the least amount of candies. According to Fall, there were only three minutes left until the deadline. From Shadow Gale's pack, Flo looked at all the other magical phones, and once she confirmed that no one was hiding anything, she gave a thumbs up. The sound of the magical phones disappeared. Some people were talking to the person beside them. Please check your neighbor's magical phones constantly, ordered Flo. Even though she said that, the atmosphere was relaxed. Noko-chan looked at her neighbor at Nyan Nyan. Their eyes met. We did it, Rue. Yeah, we did. Everyone's magical phones made a loud beep noise. The time has come, Fall made the announcement, and the one with the least magical candies is... Eh? A magical phone dropped to the ground and bounced up, followed by the owner collapsing on her back. When, it, when she collapsed, somebody got screwed. When she collapsed, it was like it happened in slow motion. Her sleeves were dancing, her hair was flowing, and, and scattering and falling down at the same time were her sunflower seeds. Fled just screwed Cherna, didn't she? The magical phone hit its owner's body and stopped moving beside her face. Her facial expressions were reflected by the light of the magical phone. It was a confused expression, speaking that she didn't understand why this was happening. The one with the least amount of candies is Cherna Mouse Pone. <laughs> oh my god, that was a crazy ass scene. I am freaking the fuck out. Oh my god, Cherna just got completely bamboozled. What in the fuck? Oh my god. Cherna just got moitered by, um, by, I'm assuming, Fla, And I'm also assuming uh, that there are going to be some people that aren't happy about that. I'm assuming Melville's going to be righteously pissed. Um, Lapis Lazuline maybe, probably isn't going to be very happy about that. They were teammates, even though uh, she didn't totally agree with Cherna. Uh, Detic, even, again, she didn't agree with Cherna. She thought she was being a pain in the ass. Or actually, even what if Detic was... <laughs> if they were checking their own team's phones, what if Detic was the one that screwed Cherna? That would be like... Oh my god. And we're not even going to find out until next chapter. Again, don't spoil me, don't tell me, but holy damn, that was awesome. Cherna just got bamboozled so freaking hard. Oh my god. It was so hard not to like yell and scream about that one. Oh my god. that was. I knew it was going to happen to somebody too. Master Side Part 4. That's enough, Pwn. Another death, Pwn. No more stop this, Pwn. I really like Fall, too. Fall is such a good character. I like Fall a lot. Fall's voice was tense. What? But the game's just getting to the good part, no? 
On the other hand, the girl's voice was slow and relaxed. The girl removed her right hand from her glasses. She snapped her right fingers together, and the screen of the monitor switched. On the room's floor, the wall, and its ceiling were an infinite amount of monitors covering, covering it up. Projected on their screens were magical girls. The one who collapsed, Cherna Mouse. The one crushed by a building, Akane. The one whose head was destroyed, a stone in its place, Masked Wonder. The one whose body was disintegrated, Magical Daisy. Whether it was on large monitors or small monitors, the magical girls' bodies were all on display. Okay? Fall's red and black eyes stared at the monitors. He looked away. His stereoscopic body began to shake, with noises beginning to distort out of him. No more. Who? Just who are you planning to kill next? Not only did Fall's image distort, but even his voice began to distort as well. His voice would pitch higher and then pitch lower with no warning. Distorted. The girl laughed. So maybe... Maybe she changed the candy numbers. Maybe she killed Charon on purpose. Me? Why are you blaming me? Now when did I actually kill anyone? Magical Daisy suffered an unfortunate accident. Then people started killing each other without permission, right? I just set the stage. It's up to those girls. To okay, maybe Magical Daisy isn't the one behind it all. Maybe I am incorrect. But still. Then people started killing each other without permission, right? I just set the stage. It's up to those girls to make friends and form relationships with each other. The noises from Fall's image stopped. He looked down at the girl. Stop playing dumb, Pwn. You want them to kill each other, Pwn. It was you who set the environment up like this, Master. But isn't that the point of the test? They can't get hurt in this situation either, right? Proper magical girls would work together and unite to escape the situation, won't they? But Magical Daisy, you placed an enemy that can reflect ranged attacks that early into a game and you can't tell me you had no malice, Pwn. That wasn't an accident, Pwn. Oh, now you're just accusing me of things, Fall. Magical Daisy simply lacked wisdom. Like a ball that just dropped to the ground, Fall's body was flat and distorted, then lengthened and contracted. He also had a synthetic voice that seemed anguished. The girl only smiled at Fall's suffering. Earlier, I sent a message to the Land of Magic, Pwn. What's happening here now? This killing game? I reported everything, Pwn. When the girl heard Fall's words, she simply replied, Is that so? And she continued to smile. So that must be why he's messing up, because he betrayed his master, and uh, that apparently goes against whatever a uh, familiar mascot is supposed to be able to do. Fall is MVP here. Um, oh man, also, yeah, somebody screwed over Cherna. It could have been rigged, but I doubt it was. I think it was probably, um, I think either Detic screwed her, or Fla did. One of the two, Detic or Fla. Uh, Fla could have botched the numbers to make it end up that way. Um, just, <laughs> man, so now Charon is done, and they can't keep their, uh, can't keep doing what they're doing with Hunting Grounds, and she didn't mention, the Master didn't mention Jenna Psycho, so she's still out there somewhere, Frankensteinified. Uh, so let's discuss this a bit before I, hiccup, before I end it. I'm gonna grab some water really quick first. Hold on. So that we can figure out, see if we can figure out this Genocyco thing for a minute here. Okay, so starting with the, you know what, uh, I'll split them into groups of four. Starting with the, um, starting with Akane and Flez group, we know that Flez's ability is her wheelchair. We know that um, Shadow Gale can fix things. We know that Masked Wonder's ability had something to do with leg strength, it seemed. Um, and she's dead anyway, so she couldn't have been the one who fixed uh, Yumenashima. Unless the whole fixing of a person's body counts as the fixing and improving that Shadow Gale can do, and it's her. And they're just hiding it, which it seems like Flez kind of the smart, wily type to be able to do. Um, but maybe, maybe not. I'm not. I'm not gonna say it's them from now. And Akane also dead, but her ability was to see people and then cut whatever she saw at a distance. Um, so it wasn't any of them. Then to look at uh, Magical Daisy's group, Daisy had the Daisy Beam. Um, Yamanashima had the uh, Invincible Suit. Uh, Noko Chan has the ability to spread her emotion. At Nyan Nyan can transport things. Then, uh, with her scrolls, she can kind of store and then release things with the scrolls. Um, 
Then the next forward, let's do Pechka's team. Um, Clientel can change her body. Pechka can make food. Delicious food, trademark. Um, and uh, uh, we still we still don't quite know. Uh, well, Rionetta said she could control dolls. Could she have sewn her up and be using her as a doll? I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm going to say no to that. And um, Miyakata Nanako can use a creature, but I guess since she had to replace the goblin, poor goblin coon, with the dragon, she can only use one at a time. I thought she could just use as many as she wanted, but I mean, I'm sure there would have been a limit somewhere, but I guess that limit is one. <laughs> um, then, uh, who else? That would leave just Melville's team that we don't know their abilities. Charon is dead, but we know her ability was to grow larger. And then... What are the other three? Lapis Lazuli, we still don't quite know her ability. It has something to do with that uh, stone, I'm betting, though. Um, then uh, there's um, Detic, who can uh, smooch buildings, the power to smooch buildings. Um, and then Melville. Melville, we don't know her ability. I'm thinking it maybe has something to do with her weapons, her harpoons and whatnot that she carries around. But, I don't know, it wouldn't really fit her to be able to stitch people up and make them walk around as their servant, would it? I don't know. I'm thinking it's either Shadow Gale and Shadow Gale and Flare are hiding Yemenashima somewhere, or maybe, like I was saying about the murder, maybe it's an outside force. I, I have no clue. I have no clue, unless somebody has like a secondary ability, or their ability extends to be able to do whatever they did. Like I said, Shadow Gale's the only one I could make that stretch for, though, that we know their ability, saying maybe she could improve her body by stitching it up. I have no clue. Uh, but either way, Yumenashima seems to be alive. Uh, and that's it. So again, just a bunch of theories and thoughts and stuff, and damn, this was this is probably the best chapter so far, just because that scene at the end was so freaking tense and I was freaking out. Um, ah, man, what else? This is probably the second typist, the second, like, craziest I've gotten for a live reaction behind uh, one of the uh, Walking Dead comic issues that I freaked out at once. Um, then, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. So please, no spoil, please. Um, that's my thoughts, just, in, just uh, on everything. All my theories are just random theories. Uh, then, uh, like, if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of these chapters, what you thought of my thoughts on them and stuff. Again, please no spoil, because I'm liking the mystery aspect of this so, so much. Um, follow on Twitter if you want. I'll talk to you there about whatever you want, and I'll keep you updated there, too, and stuff. For stuff on the channel. Uh, subscribe if you're not already for more Magical Girl Raising Project and much, 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 much more. That's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.